from time to time you've written and asked me um, about molding planes, about how to sharpen them. You've got these molding planes, they've gone rusty, they're dull, um, they're misshapen and things like that. So I'm just going to go through a couple of methods that I use to re-establish um, the shape, the profile of a molding plane. Here's a molding plane that I've got, I've just pulled it out of the rack um, earlier and I want to show you how it should look and then you can see for yourself exactly what I'm looking at. If you look on the end of there, you can hopefully see how the blade is protruding slightly past the profile of the sole of the plane. So here, you can see right in here, hopefully, you can see a little bit of the profile following the contour of the sole. And that's what we want to establish, maintain throughout the life of the plane. So this is a plane that's already done. I don't have to do anything to this one. Here's a plane that I would use for, um, for shaping. And um, I want to look at the sole. This has got two nicks in it. I don't know if we can get that close in, but there is one nick here and there's another nick right at the side. So every time I use this plane, it's leaving these two uh, long lines in the, in the piece of wood that I'm planing. So I'll try and show you that on this piece here. You can see this plane is, is working fine, but when I take this, and uh, let me see if I can get this to show you those lines there. You can just see the traces in the surface that are not very smooth. And this plane is quite dull. Uh, so we're going to sharpen this, but we're also going to get rid of those two um, lines that are coming along here. And uh, I'll show you how we do that. So first of all, I need uh, something that's going to give me the hollow here. And I've already shaped this piece, but just to show you how useful it is to have molding planes. First of all, I'm going to take this plane here and I'm going to use this. It's not intended for this. But this plane has given me a profile that I can use now almost like a file. I can wrap my abrasive paper around this and that gives me a dead-on profile for this particular plane. So if I had to redo this plane, that's what I would do. I would drop this in here with the abrasive on. I'd watch the sole of the plane. I don't want to abrade the sole of the plane and how I do that is very simple. This is the plane we want to repair. We want to restore this um, plane iron and marry it. Let me see, can we go this way? Yeah. So I think you can see into the sole here, the surface of the sole. And this is my profile piece of wood. This is marrying this one, it matches this one. So this, it gives me a round that will fit into the sole of the plane and it matches the profile near enough. It doesn't have to be exact. The radius needs to be slightly less than the radius of the plane. To protect the wooden plane sole, I don't want to abrade that at all. I just take a piece of masking tape in here and let that protect the sole a little bit. Take off the excess here. I don't need to worry too much here. Just keep that there. A little bit more here. And usually what I do is I'll tap the plane iron which I, uh, so that it is protruding through the, the sole a little bit more than normal, like that. Just send that blade up and it's wedged in so it's not going to move. And then take the abrasive paper. I'm starting with some 240 grit here. I probably wouldn't go any coarser than that, anything else, unless it was really, really bad. So here, I wrap this tight around here, and I'm going to pull this along here, 
like this, using this just like I might use a file until I see those two uh, little indents, the nicks in the blade, disappear. So already they have gone. So now I have this round to do on here and I would take just a very small flat file like this one here and I would run this on the profile of the sole again so you can hear this is cutting and I just follow that profile around and this is getting me close to the surface that I want I've got one little bit inside that I can get here with the edge of my file and that I think you'll see I have a little bit more on this side to do here so I'm not taking very much off so can you see right inside that profile there you can see a white line following the profile and that's what I want now that that's taken the steel down into the body of the plane so if I take this off now because I won't need this again now I remove the iron from the body of the plane and how we do that is we're just going to tap there's two places you tap on this plane you can tap here which is where you'll often find uh, hammer marks in here most of the old joiners just used a hammer like this it gives it a very positive hit so you can hit there I tend to use this one I like the nylon head I have the weight that shocks this back now in this case it hasn't sometimes if it won't shock there you can strike here and that will work and the nice thing about a Warrington hammer like this is you can come right under here and just give a little tap there and that's why that's shaped the way it is it just removes the wedge without any damage to it if you're careful so now I think more clearly you might be able to see that white edge that I've got that I've re-established the profile with and, uh, and now I'm going to go in the vise here this now you can put something under here you could put anything under here just to chock it here give it a little extra support now then I would go in here and I'm going to go on the back of this iron like this work on the inside of the profile rotate your paper just to get some fresh cutting surface and follow the profile as best you can it's not complicated and on this part here I would take the flat file and go on the whole of the back edge of this like this just to get you down to the very cutting edge here's another very useful tool these are wonderful these are easy lap and these are just diamond files these are wonderful uh, tools for this so I would take the coarse um, uh, the coarse one first oh, the, this is the fine this is the medium I take the medium the equivalent this is the coarsest should I say and go on this area here take the whole of the bevel and again take that bevel down till you get to the cutting edge so wherever it's a, a, a con, con, convex surface, surface, you can go with a, any type of file, whether it's diamonds or whether it's uh, abrasive paper works just fine. If you don't have this, you can just make a paddle out of um, a flat piece of wood and just take some abrasive paper on here and just follow this as well. So you've got the same effect so when you've got that profile done, can you see here, you've got a burr on this other side now, on this top side. So here you can see I've got the profile and that 
works great. I have a little bit of a nick on this side, so I would just take that flat file, probably. Just come on here. These are not going to be super hard, these, these irons, because they knew when they made them that you were going to be sharpening them and reprofiling with just either abrasive paper or with a file. So most of that makes it very simple. So I've got that done. This inside face, can you see there's been some pitting in there? This is not like a regular plain iron or a chisel where you might have to take all that pitting out. And this bevel on the back, don't worry about this too much either because you can see when this is in the plane, I have lots of back bevel on there. So this could be any angle really. This is going to be in the plane at this angle. So this could be any angle on the bevel. It can be any angle as long as it's less than this angle here. So it would work just fine. So I'm going to focus now on polishing and, and working on a more fine grit. So I'm going to go to some 1200 grit for this next, um, next bit on the inside of the concave, just to get that right. So here again, right on the inside, I'm polishing the inside of the cove. Rotate your paper, give you some fresh. This is polishing really very quickly. Now if I wanted to, I could use this same paper with a puddle like this to get the outside edge of the flat there. Same on this other. So I could go to a super fine on this one here. This cuts the steel very fast. So you have to be careful not to take too much off. This one's 1200, which is about the same grit. This is polishing very nicely. Can we see that now? So we've got that and we've got this inside to do yet. Right, so we're going to go to these sharpening stones. Again, you could use one of these for this because I just happen to have the, the sharpening stones here and these will work fine. So just a little squirt of water on these. Because this has got the pitting in, I'm going to go on the course there first. And um, that's just a glass cleaner that I'm using on here. So I'm going on this inside face. So you can see it's not flat. This, can you see that? This, this face is not flat. So this is the previous genre who had it probably used a slightly hollow stone so it took the high corners off first so don't worry about it you can lift up slightly on these molding planes not very much just a hair so instead of keeping it dead flat just lift it up just a hair and you'll get down to the very back of the cutting edge like I have now I don't I don't want to have any pitting in this edge So I'm just moving my fingers along this edge like that and I'm going onto this one. I can't get into this one so I'm going this way. I can't get sideways on. See that black that's coming on the surface there? That's the steel being abraded away. And that, so now you can see I've got right up to that cutting edge behind the very cutting edge. See, it's slightly rounded up to the edge, which is just fine on a moulding plane. I've got this top edge to get a little bit more here. Same on this one now. Long, nice. This is quite polished. For a moulding plane, this would be far beyond anything that I think most um, cabinet makers would have got when they were developing this profile. You don't really have to buff out 
this profile shape and the burr that's on there will will come off very quickly so those go out of the way and what I might do if I was concerned about the burr is I just take a piece of leather like this and some buffing compound piece of leather rub this on here wrap it around that profile like this and then just pull it like this just to polish out the marks and then I can go also with the flat side I can do the same put it on the flat side of my stick to get the flat surfaces here This just takes a few seconds, really. You don't technically need to do this uh, this phase, but you can if you want to. It's not really necessary, but you could just pull this this way. And it'll just help to remove the burr if there is one. And there is the profile for my molding plane looking very nice, this one's ready to go. So we'll see what it does now that it's been sharpened. Put this back in the plane and this is gonna show you next is how to put this in and load it. So you just sharpened your molding plane iron, slide it in from the bottom like this. Pass it back into the sole of the plane so it's not sticking out there. Take your wedge, slide it in like this and tap your wedge. Now it's up to you whether you use a steel hammer or not. I'm not putting, can you hear that? It went ch -ch 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 and that's it, that's as tight as I go. I eyeball the underside of my sole so I don't have any protrusion past the face of the sole yet. So now I'm gonna tap here. That's going to loosen because the Cutting iron is actually tapered, so I tap a couple of times here, then I tap the wedge again, just with one tap, eyeball down the sole until I see that cutting iron protrude. So one, two. Now I've got, I'm slightly protruding here, so I'm gonna test it on the piece of wood, like this. Now that's, that's taking a very thin shaving, so again I tap and then tap just to tighten. Now I'm getting, I'm getting a cut. Now all British planes have what we call a stick, which is an angle on here where instead of the, the plane being perpendicular like the European planes were, we went slightly at an angle, which enabled us to push into the corner when we were pushing the plane in the surface of the wood. It was a development that came with uh, planes from the 1700s. So we angle over, I'm not taking enough off yet. Remember when you're using a profile plane like this, your first strokes are going to be very, very small. Now that feels better. And I've got rid of all those little tram lines in there. So can you see in this, uh, this is super slick now. I've got a beautiful profile. This plane is actually too big for this piece of wood. But it's exactly, it's done. I've got exactly what I wanted with this pristine surface, which needs no sanding. And um, I'm ready to start making my molds. <laughs>